AIS and GIS are the two types of technology that you will see generally used in substation. And in this video, we are going to compare these two technologies with all these points. And if you want to get details about all these things, then you need to watch the video. Hello and welcome back. Now just to make things clear, this video will not be suggesting what is better and what is not. This is basically comparison of the two technologies. Both the technologies serves the same purpose, but uh, both has pros and cons that you will understand, understand once we progress in the video, right? So let us first start with the main difference and that is insulating medium. So first let us focus on understanding the two concepts here. One is the insulation within the phase and the another one is insulation between the phase. So let's say this is our R phase of a circuit breaker and whatever insulation is provided inside this phase is what we call as insulation within the phase. And generally it is provided by SF6 gas in high and extra high voltage switchgear. But it can also be vacuum, it can uh, be any other gas other than the air uh, which has insulating properties. So that is insulation within the phase. The second one is insulation between the phase is the insulation provided between the two phases. So let's say between R and Y phase or maybe Y and B phase, right? So here in case of this switchgear, the insulation is provided by air and hence the name is AIS or air insulated switchgear and also uh, the insulation between live part and ground. So let's say here we will connect the live part and the insu uh, insulation between live part to ground is also provided by air. Now generally the air insulated switchgear are of a live tank type design. Now what is live tank and what is dead tank that we have already discussed in detail uh, in the previous videos. I will provide link for that video down in the description. You can go and check out the differences between live and dead tank equipment, right? So that is AIS part. Now in case of GIS, all the insulation, let it be insulation within the phase, let it be insulation between the phases or insulation between live part to ground is provided by SF6 gas as of now. And this not necessary that this will be only the SF6 gas. It can be any other thing. It can be vacuum or any other gas which has dielectric properties. So in GIS, it is provided completely by that insulating gas and hence the name is gas insulated switchgear. And this type of design GIS design is a deck tank type design. So even if the supply is on and you go and touch that GIS, still nothing will happen because it is completely at dead potential and hence it is a dead tank design. Now as of now uh, the gas that is used in this switchgear is SF6 gas but what could be the future of this SF6 switchgear? Will uh, the world still be using SF6 gas in future? If you want to know more on that then you can join my free webinar on that I'll provide link for the next webinar down in the description. You can go and join that free webinar for more information. Now let us talk about the effect of altitude and this is important one. Now first understand quickly what is altitude. So altitude is the height of something uh, which is above the sea level. So sea level is considered as the basis and anything above that is considered as an altitude. Clear? Now as the altitude increases, the density of the air decreases. Now density of the air decreasing means it also degrades the dielectric property of the air. So just to give you one example, let's say if uh, the dielectric property of the air up to 1000 meter from the sea level is 100%. Let us assume that. And if the altitude goes to 2000 meter, then the dielectric property of the air will be dropping by 50%. And that causes issue with the electrical switchgear. And that's why altitude consideration is again very, very important. Now, in case of air insulated switchgear, the insulation between the phase and phase to ground is provided by air. So as we progress or as the altitude increases, this dielectric property of the air decreases. 
and when the switch gear is installed at higher altitudes the maximum voltage that it can withstand without arcing over is reduced so the maximum voltage at which it can safely operate is also reduced and that is the reason why uh, for air insulated switch gear if the installation is above 1000 meter then the equipment with higher dielectric strength is required so standard like iec standards defines that up to 1000 meter the altitude is set to be normal altitude and all the extra high voltage and high voltage equipment are designed up to 1000 meter normally but in case if the altitude is increasing then there has to be a special consideration in that equipment especially about the dielectric properties of this equipment so let me give you one example here let's say we have one site which is at a sea level and the altitude is normal let's say 1000 meter uh, meter from the sea level and here you can provide a regular breaker with a re regular dielectric strength as defined by the standards and there is another side which is at let's say 2000 meter above the sea level now in case if you provide this particular breaker for this site also then it will not be the right selection because this breaker is designed up to 1000 meter altitude but when it goes to 2000 meter altitude the dielectric strength of the air decreases so there is a possibility that if the breaker is let's say tested for 100 kV uh, this will not suffice on the 2000 meter altitude and hence a special breaker is needs to be considered in such case we need to have a breaker with higher dielectric strength now talking about GIS do we use air in GIS for insulation purpose the answer is no then do the altitude will matter in case of GIS again the answer is no GIS do not have any impact of the altitude because everything is insulated by SF6 gas face to face insulation is given by SF6 gas face to ground is also given by SF6 gas so there is no impact of altitude in it it really doesn't matter if density of air is increasing or decreasing because it is completely encapsulated uh, with the SF6 gas but yes if the outdoor bushings are used then that bushing needs to be considered for higher uh, altitude levels altitude will matter in case of bushing now let us talk about the space requirement but before moving if the video is helping you out then do like the video and do also subscribe to the channel so that you get notified every time i upload a new video and that really helps the channel to grow further so i really thank you in advance for that now let us talk about the space requirement now since the gas insulated switch gear is completely metal encapsulated and it is dead tank type in nature they are really really compact compared to the AIS technology so just to give you one quick comparison uh, let's say if you want to build one bay of 145 kV GIS then it can be fitted into a single room of 10 by 10 10 feet by 10 feet and similarly if you want to build a 145 kV AIS substation then you would need around 10 to 12 such rooms so 10 to 12 rooms of 10 by 10 feet you will need to you know accommodate that uh, huge AIS substation and that is why uh, GIS is preferred where land requirement is uh, or the land availability is very very less or the land rates are very very high in that case the GIS is preferred but I'm not saying land is the only criteria for selection of the GIS there are many things many other things as well this is one of the contributing factor now the land required for GIS substation is around 10 to 20 percent of the land that is required for the equivalent uh, AI substation so you can imagine how compact it is now let us talk about the future extensions now while designing a substation all the planners they plan for some future extensions let it be AI substation let it be GIS they plan for some future extension they keep some space for future extension so that in case if the load increases then that future extension will be able to accommodate that additional load so in case of an AI substation these extensions are very very easy and it really doesn't matter which make of uh, equipment you are using let's say for example in the existing base you are using uh, equipment of XYZ manufacturer now it is not 
mandatory to go with that manufacturer only you can go with any other manufacturer and just put the substation in that additional bay no adapter plates or anything is required in such case the, uh, the bottom line is the future extensions are very very easy but the same is not the case with GIS in case of GIS these future extensions are really cumbersome compared to the air insulated switchgear so let's say if you're using a GIS of XYZ MEC in the existing substation and you want to extend one more bay in that substation so either you have two choices here one you may have to go with that particular manufacturer only you do not have any other choice or you have to go with manufacturer who is ready to integrate his own GIS with this particular existing GIS so for that he needs to you know design some adapter plates which can match the existing design and his own design and that task is difficult and also complicated and hence the extensions of GIS is uh, a little complicated compared to the AIS technology. Now let us talk about the impact on the environment. So do this switchgear are causing any impact on the environment? Now talking about AIS first. Now AIS we saw it needs a huge amount of land and to get that land we may need to cut the forest. We need to cut down all the trees so that the land can be available and then the civil can be done on it, done on it and then the substation can be built. If the substations are to be built in hilly areas then major civil activity is required in such case and also this AI substation produces very high noise so in case unfortunately if the substation is built near the residential area then the people living near that substation would be having a problem of noise these substations are generally noisy compared to the other technology now talking about the GIS as we have already seen GIS needs a very less amount of land and hence clearing huge forest is not a problem in case of GIS. Also they are very very less noisy. So even if substation is nearby you won't be hearing any significant noise coming out of that, that GIS substation. And also this GIS is aesthetically good looking. So the GIS is so compact that it can be installed in some buildings in shopping mall so even if a shopping a GIS is installed in a shopping mall you won't even notice it so aesthetically it scores more than the AIS uh, technology AIS technology you cannot hide it you just have to have it in the open ground now as we have seen GIS is completely insulated with SF6 gas and it is placed in the metal encapsulated uh, tank so it is completely of dead tank type in nature so even if you go and touch the GIS when the supply is on nothing is going to happen it is uh, way safer than the AIS technology AIS technology has life tank uh, equipment so that uh, you cannot go and touch the life part of course not uh, that is not at all recommended so definitely in safety aspect GIS score more than the AIS but that doesn't mean AIS is less safer or it's not safer at all uh, still 70% of the substation worldwide consists of AIS technology so and also in case of AIS you need to keep the insulators clean most of the time so if dust and dirt accumulate on the insulator it can cause flashover and the failure of the insulator and to avoid that generally customer has to clean the insulator using the hotline washing and that is a labor intensive task uh, and also a frequent maintenance is required but all these things are eliminated in the GIS in GIS you don't need to have any hotline washing or nothing no labor intensive task is required to maintain the GIS now moving on the cost topic yes we have seen that GIS scores more in majority of the aspects that we have seen so far but when we talk about the cost position then GIS is the most expensive technology that is available and AIS is the most cheapest technology available and hence uh, there is no question mark or confusion why 70% of the substation are still with AIS technology so this this is one of the factor that needs to be considered while selecting whether we want to go with GIS or we want to go with AIS right clear 
so that's all for this video guys i hope this was useful you have understood the major differences between ais and gis technology and also if you're interested in the courses that i have designed on electrical machine and one introductory course on substation then you can go and log in on courses.theelectricalguide.in i'll provide link for that also down in the description if the video helped you then do like the video i really really appreciate that and subscribe my channel with the bell notification icon turned on so that you get notified about the next videos i post videos related to electrical engineering on this channel so thank you for watching guys i'll see you in my next one but till then keep watching keep learning Thank you.